Right now on ABC 10 News at 4 o'clock, San Diego businesses will get a head start on the state's reopening as we move into the yellow tier. The places that will get to reopen inside for the first time in more than a year. A San Diego-led sting against global organized crime, how investigators use encrypted smartphones to take down thousands of criminals. And heart-wrenching video shows a young migrant girl wandering alone at the border in San Isidro. What Border Patrol has learned about her tonight. ABC 10 News at 4 starts now. Call it a preview of next week's grand reopening. San Diego County officially enters the state's yellow tier tomorrow. Thank you for joining us. I'm Kimberly Hunt. The move gives businesses a head start in boosting their indoor capacity. ABC 10 News reporter Mimi Alcala is joining us now live from Little Italy. And Mimi, this also means bars can finally reopen indoors. It does, Kimberly. So starting tomorrow morning, they can reopen inside at 25% capacity instead of just offering the outdoor seating like you see here. And it's something they haven't been able to do in any of the other tiers. Uh, we will have six days in the yellow tier prior to June 15th, where all tiers will be ret uh, retired. San Diego County has seen less than two new daily COVID-19 cases per 100,000 people for two weeks straight, meaning we've moved into the yellow tier. Effective Wednesday morning, many businesses will be able to allow more people in. Informal outdoor gatherings see capacities increase. Gyms, bars indoors, restaurants. Family entertainment centers, amusement parks, and water parks will all see increased capacity. There are many changes in the yellow tier, including gyms opening at 50% capacity and allowing the use of saunas and steam rooms. Wineries, breweries, and distilleries can open at 50% capacity. Family entertainment centers can open at 50% capacity as well. And bars can finally reopen inside at 25% capacity. At Bottlecraft Little Italy, these kegs will be moved out of the way and replaced with bar stools, something manager Ian Cutler has been waiting for. The light amount of people that will allow inside is just it's still a positive change you know it's bright people like it so he says it'll be a nice start before the full june 15th reopening date it's a great little slight step before they allow everything wide open um, just to kind of ease people into it And there will be a lot more changes starting tomorrow, including outdoor live events moving to 67% capacity. We do have all of that information on our homepage on the website 10news.com. For now, we're live in Little Italy. Mimi Alcala, ABC 10 News. Thank you, Mimi. A long procession of officers escorted the bodies of two San Diego police detectives to the funeral home today. Detectives Ryan Park and Jamie Huntley Park were killed on Friday when a wrong way driver slammed into their car on the five in San Isidro. They were married after meeting at the police academy almost 10 years ago. They rose through the ranks together, each becoming detective at the same time. We're told a memorial service for the parks will be held next week on the 15th at the Maranatha Chapel in Forest Ranch. The other driver was also killed in the crash. The CHP is still investigating and has not yet identified her. Close to 1,000 arrests in 16 countries and the worldwide seizure of drugs, weapons, cash and property. The FBI and the U.S. Attorney today announcing a sweeping sting operation with a direct connection to San Diego. ABC 10 News anchor Mary McKenzie explains how law enforcement used encrypted smartphones to take the criminals down. In the room for this press conference were members of law enforcement from all over the world, calling this a watershed moment for them. And it started right here with the FBI's San Diego field office. These international arrests and the U.S. charges were possible because of a San Diego-based FBI investigation like none other in history. Look at this map. Every country you see in orange was involved. If you really take that in, there are relatively few that weren't involved in Operation Trojan Shield. This global sting in which organized crime gangs were sold encrypted phones that law enforcement officials could monitor. The FBI here in San Diego creating and developing their own encrypted platform called Anum, marketing it as made by criminals for criminals, when actually Anum allowed them to track every message exchanged 
used on those phones. The U.S. attorney announcing today the unsealing of indictments against 17 distributors of these Anum devices, calling this an unprecedented blow to crime gangs. Eight have been arrested so far. The rest are now fugitives. Essentially, the Trojan horse in this was the platform Anum, which allowed law enforcement to listen in and see exactly what the bad guys were doing. So what came of it? 27 million messages, 12,000 devices sold, every single one used, according to the FBI special agent in charge, for illegal criminal activity. In addition to the roughly 800 worldwide arrests, 500 of which happened within the last 24 hours, Operation Trojan Shield also led to the seizure of $48 million in cash, hundreds of firearms, 50 or more luxury cars, and 32-plus tons of drugs. Now, I asked Special Agent in Charge Suzanne Turner if they could do this again. and She said, we did it once. Why not? Clearly trying to send a blow to the confidence of those who use these encrypted devices for illegal activity. Reporting downtown, Mary McKenzie, ABC 10 News. The federal government is taking steps to recover our supply chain. The Biden administration just finished a 100 day review and will now form a task force. They'll focus on the disruptions that we've seen for semiconductors, construction, transportation and agriculture. Officials say their goal is to increase domestic production in the areas and limit shortages. Now, this should also improve the recent spike in prices that we've been seeing. Federal authorities have discouraged companies from making ransom payments, but the CEO of Colonial Pipeline testified to senators today that it was the right thing to do during its recent cyber attack. I chose the option to make the ransom payment in order to get all the tools necessary and the optionality of those tools to bring the pipeline on as quick as we possibly could, safely as well as securely. His hearing comes a day after the Justice Department said it recovered most of the money that the company gave the hackers. The FBI has arrested a Bay Area mother wanted for murder after her young son was found dead on a Las Vegas hiking trail. Agents took Samantha Rodriguez into custody today after she was found in Denver. The body of her seven-year-old son, Liam, was found late last month, days after he was last seen with his mother. Rodriguez was named as a suspect yesterday. She is currently in a Denver jail awaiting extradition to face her murder charge in Las Vegas. The couple accused in a deadly road rage shooting in Orange County made their first court appearance today. Marcus Ariz and Wynn Lee are charged in the shooting that killed six-year-old Aiden Leos. Ariz is charged with murder and faces 40 years to life in prison if convicted. Lee is charged as an accessory, which comes with a three-year maximum sentence. His mom was driving him to kindergarten when the shooting happened. Investigators tracked down Ariz and Lee after a two week manhunt. Schools are out on summer break. And as we look ahead to the fall, there will be a lot of changes. Many schools are announcing they'll only offer in person learning, meaning students will be spending less time in front of screens. Now, during the pandemic, experts said that hard rules about screen time didn't need to be enforced, but now that kids are out of school and rules are a bit more lax, they will have an opportunity to get away from screens. We want them to play outside, play with, like, interact with friends, interact with their family members, just getting outside and having some physical activity. Dr. Jean Morjani is a pediatrician. She says rules on screen time don't need to be strict as long as kids are able to get other important things out of the way first. That can include chores, schoolwork, extracurriculars, and time to socialize with family and friends. Now, because kids have more free time during the break, now would be a great time to come up with a screen time plan. Now with more kids having tablets and mobile phones, I think that it's a great time for all families to sit down and review. Well, if we're gonna give you or let you use the tablets, the computers, your cell phone, these are rules that we kind of all need to agree on because this is a privilege. Dr. Borjani says one plan may not work for all families, so it is okay to adjust these rules. The only hard rule that she says that families should follow is no screen time for children under 18 months because it is a critical time for development. 